Hello everyone, you're watching PC Helper and welcome to another video in the Python 3.9 tutorial series. If by the end of this video you feel like you have learned something today, then please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe to PC Helper for regular content. So in the last video we talked about polymorphism in Python and in this video we'll be talking about its first type that is duct typing. It is a very interesting concept to be honest. So first of all, let's take a look what duct typing actually is. So have a look at this phrase here. The name duct typing comes from the phrase, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So if there's a bird who looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And later in this video, you'll get a better understanding what this phrase actually means. So first of all, let's take a look at the technical definition of duct typing. Duct typing is a concept related to dynamic typing where the type or the class of an object is less important than the method it defines. When you use duct typing, you do not check type at all. Instead, you check for the presence of a given method or attribute. So to make you understand this concept, I'll teach you from the very basic. So just be patient in this video, wait till the end of this video and I'm pretty sure you will understand everything. So first of all, we'll be just making a class and let's name it duck here and let it have a method named sound. So what the sound function will do is it will just print the sound of the duck that is quack quack that's it and we know how to access a function inside a class we have to make an object so let x be an object of duck and we have to access x dot sound so yeah here it is and now when I will execute this function this program you can see quack quack was printed so this is the very basic of classes and objects. Now let's get more into duct typing, but first of all, let's make some other classes too. So I'll just copy this class duck and I'll make some similar classes. So I'll make three classes in total. And the name of the first one will be, let's say dog. And what it will print is the sound of the dog. So we will print here woof woof. And the sec third one should be, let's say cat. And the sound of the cat will be meow meow. We all know that. So meow, meow. And now in the next three lines, everything related to duct typing will be very clear. So we will be making a function here and let's name it all sounds. And what this function will do is it will take an object as an argument. So if you want to take any object as an argument, you can simply write OBJ. And what this function will do is it will just call object dot sound. That's it. What this function, this is what this function will do. And now all we have to do is we just have to call this function. So the name of this function is all sounds and we have to pass an object as an argument. So we have X as, as our object here. And now when I will execute this program, you can see quack quack was printed, but let's say X is an object of class dog here. And now when I will execute this program, woof woof was printed. And let's say X is an object of class cat. And now when I will execute this program, now meow meow will be printed. And now when we will read the definition of duct typing again, you will know that this is duct typing. The, what we actually did here was duct typing. So let's read the definition of duct typing once again. Duct typing is a concept related to dynamic typing where the type or the class of an object is less important than the method it defines. So what it means here is it doesn't matter to which class or object X belongs. What matters is if that object has a method named sound defined in it. So it doesn't matter to which class or object it belongs. What matters is if the required method is present in our object or is present in the class to which our object belongs. And now let's read that phrase once again. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So what it actually means here is that it doesn't matter whose sound it is. If it's a sound of a dog, if it's sound of a cat, if it's sound of a duck, it doesn't matter. What actually matters is if there's any method named sound present, it doesn't matter if it woofs, it doesn't matter if it meows, all that matters is if we have the required method or the required function present in our object class. That's all that matters. Now lastly, I'll walk you through this program once again. So what this program does is, first of all, it had a class named duck. This duck class had a method named sound and it printed quack quack. Similarly, we had two other classes named dog and cat and both of these classes also had a method named sound, but they printed woof woof and meow meow respectively. Then we had a function. What this function did was, this function took an object as an argument and then called the function sound for that object. And finally, we made an object for any of these classes. In this case, we have made it for our, for our class cat. We can make it for any class. We just have to make an object 
and finally we called our function all sounds and passed our object as an argument and its working was really simple as our python program saw this all sounds function was called and x was passed in a, as an argument it saw that x is an object of class cat so it went to this function it put x as an argument and it called x dot sound now sound was present in all the classes but now it knew x is an object of class cat so it went to class cat it went to method sound and printed meow meow so this is what duck typing is it doesn't matter if an object belong to any of the class present in the program all that matters is if that object has the required method or function required method or attribute so i hope you got this concept if you have any doubt you can write in the comment section if you like this video then please leave a like and i'll see you guys in the next one